Welcome, everyone, to the Day After podcast. I am Ryan Neo Wayne. And as you guys know, I did my mini. We're not here to talk about that, except for one question I do have. Today, we are talking about Joe Kingpin King, you know, like, or Joe Kingpin, basically. <laughs> um, so, yeah, he did not do a mini. He did a full org season, essentially. And, yeah, so, um, yeah. How overall, how was it for you um, doing uh, Survivor Vanquish Candy Omar's Candyland? Uh, it was great, honestly. I loved it. Uh, you know, never doing an org before, honestly, kind of just realizing like that I could even do them somewhat recently. So, uh, it was definitely very fun. Uh, met a lot of great people. Um, and it was fun to kind of see what some of my uh gameplay, uh, if I ever did play Survivor, like how, how that would kind of yeah. shape out. Nice, nice. Uh, so my first question. Because you got into Vanquish because I got into Vanquish mm -hmm. in the sense of like, you were like, before I even messaged you, you were already like, all right, I'm doing season 10. I'm applying right now. So um, obviously, I'm, I'm guessing it was because it looked fun and you saw me doing it. Like, all right, I kind of want to see what, how well I do. Um, my first question, it had, or that's sending me my second. What did you learn from my game? going in on uh basically because you saw i was the uh i was basically the first one to do it make all the mistake i was like the messiah i'm like vanquish jesus uh yeah no 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 deadpool one wolverine reference but <laughs> so what did you learn from my game going into this uh, since you had a little more insight yeah, well, I know um, you tried very hard to, like, make yourself seem less threatening using kind of more of the nerdy tropes and everything. Um, and uh, it, it worked to a degree, but also made you very much seem like a strategic threat very early on when that kind of was coming up over and over again. So I wanted to try to play a lot more dumber early on to make people uh, think that, oh, he's just going to be a cool guy to hang out with. Like, let's just talk to this guy. He's going to make us laugh. Like, let's at least get him to the jury phase because I want to be able to talk to this guy for a longer period of time. Um, now, of course, I was still playing the game strategically, but I would, you know, especially in like big group settings of, or the chats or any of that stuff, I would usually play a lot dumber, um, yeah. at, at least in the first half of the game. Yeah, so um, to expand upon that, you came in with the strategy of going in there saying that you've only seen season 45. So explain mm -hmm. to me a little bit of the logic behind that as well as um, why go in, or like also, I, I would be like, tell us a little bit about that basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, I think Survivor 45 is a great season for newbies to watch. Um, I just recently showed people who have never seen Survivor 45 and they loved it. Um, so I felt like it logically makes sense that maybe a new person can watch that season really love it and want to dive into what this thing is which one of the things that you might be able to find is online orgs um uh so it kind of made sense for me to because I, I i obviously i can't say i've never watched the show because how would i have found survivor <laughs> you would be surprised um i believe when i was talking to someone um from a, um talking to someone uh funny enough not from vanquish but this was at like a little Bryce and win mm -hmm. um where it was their you know it was like their roommate that did it and they thought it was fun that dude did not go to any did not even watch survivor just saw the you know saw the mini that that guy did and yeah. then boom um, it was like an Instagram thing. And so uh -huh. he didn't like an Instagram one. And like, I think he made it pretty far. Um, I'm a little foggy on the details, but yeah. So um, people from all kinds of backgrounds, I was talking to yeah. someone and how, and you know, they mentioned like they passively watch Survivor. Yeah. And, uh, but they're super hardcore into like doing orgs and minis, whether it's Facebook in person uh -huh. or Instagram ones. Um, apparently Instagram ones are pretty big. Oh, interesting. Yeah. See, I just felt like that would be too, like people would question it a lot if I hadn't yeah. done that. And I, I, what I try to do as much as I can is tell believable lies. 
Like if I believe that there's just like an ounce of truth to it and I can get other people to kind of maybe believe it, like I'm going to use that. And that's why, you know, I wanted it to be new, but I still know the show. I still know at, at least the modern format because there's at least some important stuff that I, I wanted to be able to talk about with how the modern game is, even if they didn't use it, like an earn the merge wasn't ever done. Yeah. Um, it at least allowed me to kind of like, try, like I, I talked a lot about that early game too. It was just like, I thought there was going to be an earn the merge. So I was like kind of trying to plan the game around that and make other people think that they need to plan around that. That's fair. That's fair. All right. So starting off, um, I remember um, just for, as a little disclaimer, Joe would tell me things that would happen. I would not come on, comment on anything other than, oh, that's cool, or this. Because <laughs> strictly so Joe can have his survivor experience, also that would have been cheating. Yeah. Um. So he would tell me things, and a lot of the things he told me were the same things he was saying in his confessionals. I did join VIP because I thought it'd be cool. Um, it was. Um, but yeah, so when you went into this game, um, what was like your first reaction with uh seeing the cast because you saw two people mm -hmm. that i have played with that being dylan and johnny yeah uh it was weird because i was first excited to work with them but then i kind of got scared because i had already told like i realized a bit afterwards i already told my tribe that um i i i am a new fan and then I was suddenly kind of like, wait a second, if I have to compare notes with them, they might know you, they might know about the podcast, and then suddenly my cover could get blown. Um, yeah. So I was definitely very concerned about actually meeting them at, at a certain point. But at first I was like, heck yeah, those are two people who I know I can talk to and potentially work with moving forward. And those were people that I worked with um, mm -hmm. to some degree um during the game as well um but yeah and then um when you noticed there was 15 people did you kind of suspect that there was going to be this seemed like way too small of a number for people mm -hmm. to did you expect some uh, more people to come in and if so who i think i was honestly just so excited to be doing it i i didn't count how many people for the one of the hairs so um uh i i was i was definitely actually surprised i was like oh dang um especially uh one of them being one of your favorite players at least at the time janet yes um and alex uh -huh. who also you played with so yes i did um it those were the two i was most looking forward to like i i was like please let me start with them <laughs> which based on what i know i think you and alex would have probably vibed a lot uh -huh. um he and i never really got to play together it was both our names at the first uh at the first tribal and then mm -hmm. you know obviously he went and thanks to mama felicia i was able to stay in the game and not go home with an idol in my pocket because i think that would have crushed my psyche yeah not even joking guys but to uh go back in this and then we had another one from um i did watch this mini it was tanya from mm -hmm. uh survivor thailand and uh the first time she played she ended up bailing or i don't want to say bail she said that she was willing to go home because she had a concert the next day. So night one, near the end of the night, she was like, hey, you can vote me out. So this is the first time of her like coming back. So when she ended up on your team, what were like your first thoughts? Um, I was... It, it's weird because like it's it, she, yeah she's a survivor player but she's also on like one of the worst seasons of survivor in many opinion and an early boot of that season so um at, like i definitely didn't have like the survivor starstruck i think i would have had with a lot of other players that vanquish has had um so i definitely was i i almost kind of looked at her not even as a favorite i was like this is just someone who um i think could be a shield and could potentially want to work with moving forward just because i know that she's going to have a target on her even though uh i don't know if the target's necessarily warranted <laughs> yeah all right so um this is like a two-parter question the mm -hmm. first part um the first alliance you got into was the D, &D alliance so mm -hmm. this was matt and um i'm sherry sherry yeah i knew it i thought it was 
I thought it was Sherry, but I second guessed myself. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, and then like you bonded right away at the beginning. Yeah. So um, tell me how that all came about. That's the first part of this question. Yeah, uh, that was very uh, intended on my end. Um, <laughs> I, I um, when, when we first got into our chats for the Bubblegum Tribe, we were all talking about random things. And one of the things that I really wanted to make sure was if I had any knowledge of something that is being said, that I can connect with that. Even though I'm not, I'm not a huge D and D player to be honest. Like I play it here or there, but I'm not like like they like not, they are they are yeah. way into it and uh so i i still saw the D, D thing and was like okay these are three people uh who are very into D. &D. i know uh and, and there's like a lot of people in that first introduction thing that were saying you know D, D. and so it was it was very like okay let me just like try to make sure i'm here get some stable ground as like some people who probably don't want to vote me out at least first um so that way I can actually kind of maneuver through the game. But um, yeah, like I reached out to Sherry first. She was the first person I talked to and I made sure to talk to her about d and I was like, wow, you know, that's so great. We had a quick little connection. I asked her who she's vibing with um, and she said, Matt. Uh, and, uh, you know, then Matt reached out to me. We started talking about d and as well. And I was like, let's start this chat. So let's start the d and three, you know? And I, I basically created this little line here it's uh very, very much intended like like there's a good chance that if i'm not like really pushing the D, &D thing that that's that alliance doesn't happen all right so my second part to this question when did you flip because we know you flipped yeah <laughs> um <laughs> the thing is it's like i know i'm a little foggy on this because and a lot of viewers at home who aren't weren't in vip uh, would know this too, but like we didn't get to see too much of you um, pre-merge, mostly mm -hmm. because the bubblegum, up until uh, the swap, didn't really go to tribal. So when did you go to, uh, or when did um, you re realize, hey, maybe I should work with Tanya and Brandon H? Um, so that was the morning of uh, Thursday right before our first uh, challenge in tribal um, uh, for a while, I wanted to take out Brandon H. He was actually the first person I was wanting to target in the game um, because I thought, okay, I got my D and D Alliance. Uh, I just want to get these three. Let's take out Brandon H and then maybe we can then take out Tanya or Reese. But then I started realizing how close Matt and Reese were uh and frankly it was just uh like like they would be inseparable like like they were way closer than the dnd &D three ever could be um so if i took out brandon h first if we ended up having to go uh the the chances of taking out um reese would be very hard because sherry and tania never talk to each other they they like straight up never once pre-merge talk to each other in the game not even up until their eliminations? Uh, no. It was only maybe a group chat, like like in our tribe chat. Like That's the most that they would ever talk. They never had any uh, private conversations. They never started. Interesting. Um, so the fact that I knew that that um, heading into the first challenge, I knew that there was no way I could then get those three to take out Reese to keep the uh, D and D three together. So once I kind of realized like I, I needed Brandon H to make sure that I can execute this plan and make sure that those three, like us three can get through to, you know, the next phase. Um, it kind of, it, it kind of made me realize like I need to work with these the guys right now. And they're also on the bottom, like they are being targeted to some degree. Now, how deep the targeting is, is a different question because some people are saying like, uh, oh, I wasn't uh, targeting Tanya or I wasn't targeting Brandon H. Uh, but, you know, I, I kind of stirred the pot a little bit. I made people throw out names and I kind of knew that those two would be names people would say. Um, so I kind of created the conversations knowing where it was going to go so that way I could then go to them be like this is what they're saying interesting um you mentioned that sherry um didn't um talk to reese you and i never or you never really mentioned any times you 
did you ever have any like one-on-ones with Reese or like how deep did those conversations go? Because she was, she pretty much was your target pre-merge. Yeah, we talked, um, the, but I mean, I just never felt like it was anything real. It, I, I felt like I was going to be someone that she would maybe keep and, but then right at merge or something, like she would throw me to the sides. Like she, she, she was actually like, top two in a lot of people's trust rankings like a lot of people liked her and that was scary to me um and that's why i created this whole thing to get her like tanya had put her as her uh, reese was her number two in the game um <laughs> until i told them about that and then suddenly she became the lowest ranked person on T tanya's uh power rankings uh, or trust rankings um and the same with brandon brandon had her pretty high and then i <laughs> so so i i knew very much that if she gets to the merge she's going to be someone who's going to get a lot of bonds with a lot of people and i just did not want to play with someone like that even though i was going to do that it's, you know, I'm going to totally talk to a bunch of people, but I outwardly saw her, you know, already very strong in that. And I was like, I want to be the one doing that. Yes. So she was your target, mm -hmm. but you didn't get to, you didn't really get the opportunity for, uh, for five travel councils <laughs> to do so. So how was it having an immunity streak? I already know this answer and yeah, be honest because I'm going to tell them the truth. Yeah. I mean, it, it, okay. I mean, it's a double-sided sword. Okay. In, in one aspect, you're not going, you're safe. You know, you make it through another tribal. On the other hand though, if you get to emerge with someone who you know is going to be willing to get rid of you and you're not really strong with, whereas I was, I felt pretty tight, honestly, with a lot of the other people on my tribe, except for her. Um, so for me, it felt like, I mean, and no, no hard feelings to Reese about this, but uh, for, for my game, she was like the cancer of the tribe. Like we, we needed to, we needed to get rid of her <laughs> because if she stayed there, it was only going to be bad things for my game moving forward. Yes, um, you did. Yeah. Yeah. Um... And, you know, timing is a very important part of this game. Uh, and then uh, when you dropped your buffs, what were you hoping to uh, hoping to happen there? Um, I mean, because I, I know, like, obviously, uh, it's something that can make or break a strong player. Yeah. And it's just RNG. Um, yeah. So what was your thoughts when the swap was about to happen? Yeah, I, I mean, I was shitting bricks. It was it was scary for me because um, especially how it was all playing out was so nerve wracking because I was it was me and Mike. We were the last two to get put on the wheel or like we were the last two on the wheel. And I see my two closest allies of Tania and Brandon H on one side with the bubblegum majority. Like, it's crazy. It's like, wow, there's so much security over there. Like, there's no way I would go home pre-merge if I go there. And then on the other side <laughs> was Matt along with, uh, you know, uh, it was two lollipops at the time and three starbursts and bubblegums hadn't gone yet. So if we lose, I'm a very easy target there. <laughs> like I am someone who could easily get taken out without playing the game. Um, so it was it was the greatest feeling when I got put over onto lollipop 2.0 because that like secured myself to the merge whereas the other one would have pro I would say, I would say 80% chance I go home pre-merge. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, the swap is the swap is always scary. And especially um, cause you played on a season that seemed very loyal there was a lot of loyal people from your season. Mm -hmm. So it, it did seem like, you know, yeah, there were like some fractures or like I noticed on um, Starburst tribe, um, you know, like there was like a core four and then those four did kind of like cannibalize each other at one point, but that was only due to mistrust um, mm -hmm. and whatnot. And then learning stuff about, you know, uh, certain contestants, but anywho. So, when the swap happened and uh this is very important so and you didn't mention this joe was complaining in his confessionals 
<laughs> Joe hated the fact that he wasn't going to tribal council. He was like, I want to play the game. I want to vote someone else. <laughs> My shitty Joe impression that has that's nothing like him. Yeah. But like it was like it was like baffling to me. So why were you so frustrated at this? I know like you yeah. wanted to get Reese out. However, yeah. you you had this like pent up frustration. So explain that to me. Yeah, well, there's uh, a lot of Survivor players say that it's also very important that you go to Tribal pre-merge once because you need to experience it. You need to have at least some level of doing it uh, when you get to the merge because there's going to be so much going on, so much chaos can like kind of happen um, that you need to go. And the fact that I knew that there was someone who was very dangerous to my game, uh, I, I wanted to go at some point, and I felt like... Every time we won a challenge, the chances of that happening were decreasing like a bunch. Um, and it, it, Reese also great challenge competitor. Like she's really good at this game. Yeah. <laughs> and so Agreed. that's what was really tough was um, she was really good uh, on original bubblegum. Matt was really good. Sherry uh, was really, as good at challenges. Um, I was doing my best to make sure I was like middle of the pack with, with everyone. Like I didn't want to stand out too much. I didn't want to be dragging behind. Um so by kind of that nature, we were always a try that could get at least a second place in these challenges because we were just kind of stacked uh, in terms of challenges, yeah. uh, which I didn't think at first. I, I, I didn't realize how good Reese and, uh, and Matt would be, to be honest. I, I thought that they might be a little uh, not not as capable, but they were they were great. So um, it was definitely nice to, to be winning, but also, uh, you know, you need to make your move because if we got to the merge, I would have been committed to bubblegum. I think a lot more because I know everyone would have been targeting us. Um, and so therefore forcing us all to work together. Um, even though I know that Reese and Matt probably would have been willing to throw me to the side and it would, it, it, like, I just wouldn't be able to play the game the way I wanted to play basically. So that's why you threw the challenge. Yeah. Tell me, so for those of you who don't know or don't didn't catch that part, so when it came to the party blower challenge, it was thrown. Mm -hmm. And that's the only reason Bubblegum uh, lost that one. Um, because for all intents and purposes, just based on everything, it looked like it would have been at least been closer um, because it was 30 second difference. If you mm -hmm. and uh, the people you got in on it gave it like an honest try, I mean, I'm not saying it was a guaranteed win, but it would have been a lot closer. So yeah. how did that conversation go? Um, and yeah, tell me how it went for that. Yeah, so um, it originally started uh, right after we swapped. Uh, I, I didn't want to throw that challenge because we didn't get a chance to talk to Brandon B or um, Brian yet. So that, that was actually a very important challenge to win. Like we needed to make sure that we moved on so we could have proper conversations with them. Um, but uh, it, yeah, it originally started with me talking to Brandon H and Tanya. We were the Trace Amigos Alliance. Um, so uh, I, I basically threw out the idea to them, like, what if we talked to Reese about throwing the challenge to save Matt's? Like I, I, and I, I very much was like trying to angle it as like, let's save, uh, you know, keep the bubblegum people around. Cause we have the numbers. Like that was my pitch to Reese, um, which they were totally down for, uh, Brandon H and, uh, Tanya. So they were definitely in on it. Uh, and then I, I actually found out that Brian was also throwing the challenge, but I actually didn't talk to him. He was trying to throw the challenge for Erica. Um, hmm. so trying to save her. So, so yeah, uh, that was not one that I was not uh, aware of. Uh, but then I also, yeah, I talked to Reese. She agreed in the chat. Now, she in the, uh, we, we knew kind of what the challenge was going to be because we went seconds. And Reese was doing some, like, um, was practicing. We were all practicing. And she was going easily a minute of it being fully blown out. Um, whereas in the challenge, she went 15 seconds. 
Um, and yeah, she, she tried to tell us after the season that she didn't throw the challenge, um, which it's I... always, it's always, <laughs> it's always tough to say because yeah. you can always kind of like write the story. However, yeah. Um, just like a winner yep. that, uh, I complain about all the time, all the love I'm like over it, but like, you know, yeah. it's always, you can always say things after the fact. It is always suspect. Even this interview could technically yeah. be suspect, but yeah. Joe's honest when he's not, you know, playing Survivor. So yeah. we're going to take it for what it was. Um, but yeah. Um, so you guys lost that challenge. Mm-hmm. And then was your bloodlust just boiling at that point? You were like, yes finally get to go to tribal yes i was so excited um <laughs> like there was it, it, it was just so great to finally be able to make my move because you now to be honest it wasn't as good as a move that i that it could have been if it was og bubblegums going because i had a, this crazy three two one vote splits that i uh <laughs> that i had in motion that if we went that would have been what happened um so uh this one was a little uh different where it's like it should be very obvious bubblegum sticks together and so but instead yeah the, the trace amigos bring in brandon b and brian were the fantastic misfits that's that became our new <laughs> alliance because the idea of us uh all being great players who at one point were on the bottom which is hilarious because I was never on the bottom, but I would pitch myself to them that I was someone who was on the bottom and they all believed me. <laughs> Interesting. Um, I might get into this more mm-hmm. um, when we go into the merch portion of this, mm-hmm. but did you ever suspect that they were lying to you? No. Not at all. Nope. I, I, I knew that, you know, there's a chance that, uh, uh, something could happen, but, uh, it, it was mostly like an idle play was really what I was scared of is if, if Reese had something. Um, but I suspected, uh, to be honest, I thought Matt had it. Um, and I thought that this was like kind of the chance to make a move without Matt's being, being able to be there to protect her. Now, obviously Matt didn't have an actual idol. He had the cookie idol. <laughs> the fictional cookie idol. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So <laughs> he wanted to be able to save her, but um, uh, yeah, I just felt like this, uh, this was the time to do it. Um, Brandon H and Tanya uh, seemed really happy to work with me. Um, I know later on it became a little more rocky. Like they were, there was a little more questioning if they wanted to keep working with me but i know at least pre-merge um they were super down brandon b and i talked a lot pre-merge like he might he, there's a chance that i talked to him more than i did brandon h <laughs> like but like we talked a lot because i knew he was the most likely person in that alliance to flip against us um so i was trying really hard especially early on to like talk strategy with him, talk, talk game, talk about his, uh, you know, family, talk about all this, uh, you know, like, what are you watching? What are you doing? Let me see your dogs. Like I was doing a lot of this stuff to try to really make him feel comfortable with working with me, um, which he was very comfortable pre-merge changes, you know, I pretty much right when the merge happened. Uh, but yeah, uh, definitely. I, I felt like I was very secure. It, it felt like, like crazy thing like i would have had to misplay i think for people to want to take me out right there yeah you seem like you were in a comfortable position throughout the entire pre-merge and up until the sherry's elimination which is sad um Mm -hmm. because like you know she took it personally i mean yeah it's admittedly it's hard to not take it personally because yes it's a game and i know what first time i played i was like oh this is like my one time i would ever be doing something like this Uh well one i didn't know how big like the or community was but also like you know i was when i realized that it wasn't me i was in or when i realized the boat was me i was in shock and i was like uh no wait this can't be right yeah. Um, and then you know it was like so you know it's one of those things where I was in Sherry's shoes where I knew I was going home granted I didn't cry I just had a mental mm-hmm. breakdown and yeah. dressed up like Captain America uh, but like you know her approach to it it was pretty sad mm-hmm. Um, 
watching it as a viewer. And you even chimed in there to be like, you know, it's like, hey, this is really not that bad. This is like just how the game panned out. Because I will say this about certain orgs, or at least what I've kind of noticed with Vanquish from the minis that I have seen and whatnot in your season, mm -hmm. they like to start their merge late. Yeah. And like, I know that's something where it makes it, you know, like it's something where if you watch, it's like, oh, okay, they're going through something hard, but it is super stressful for a player. So yeah. when you guys learn, and they even teased you about the merge, like the all the different letters and whatnot for it, that the merge, y'all were going into that challenge expecting it. And so, you know, what was your like thought process throughout all that, especially when you lost it and you knew like Sherry was going home? Yeah, I definitely, um, uh, cause when, when we first voted out to Reese, by the way, uh, Sherry was really upset cause she's like, I, she knew she was next basically. And she was telling me that, um, and I would tell her like, no, no, you're still good. We just got to win this next challenge and we're in the merge. Like that was like, what I was trying to say is like at 11, the, the, we, we got to merge. There's the, they, they aren't going to do it at 10. Um, so I was, I, I like, that was my way of kind of comforting her is like, we just win one challenge and you're fine. You're going to make it. And um, unfortunately when that ended up not happening uh, it was tough because also um, it was that um, like word game that you had, like, you, yeah. that, that was the challenge. Um and it was a tie. So it, we had to choose a champion. They had to choose a champion. And yes. our team, our tribe couldn't make a decision about who they wanted to pick, basically. Um, and Tanya really wanted to do it. And Brandon B really wanted to do it. Um, and uh, I just felt like Brandon B, he won both of his rounds. We were doing some word stuff before the challenge and he was like killing all of us in it. So I made that executive's decision to send in Brandon be there, which, you know, when he ends up losing it, you know, it kind of was like, oh, dang. I, and, and Tanya said that she knew it. She knew it within like five seconds or something. Um, so <laughs> if I had chosen Tanya instead, you know, Cherry makes it yeah. to the merge. The thing is, it's like, and especially with those fill in the blank ones, is sometimes it's just hard to like be like, yeah. oh, it's definitely this or oh, it's that. Yeah. Um, even if you have like a prompt, like all this season was, you know, Omar's Candyland. So like it was all candy themed and it was like first last. So you can kind of do that. But mm -hmm. like, you know, sometimes uh, it's tricky. Sometimes it's easier than other times because personally it might click better in your brain than someone else. Mm -hmm. um, and it happens. And I don't even think it was like a thing of like, what's it called? Um performance anxiety or something or like mm -hmm. you know when you're on the spot you always do a little bit less better than when you're practicing yeah i think it was legit something where rc was just able to get it faster yeah and um yeah so uh you guys lost that one that you didn't throw yeah um yeah that was the one and, so, and it was the closest challenge pre merge <laughs> it was it was tense like even though i knew you were pretty much safe I was like, oh man, this is a nail biter. Yeah. Uh, and I was playing along too, and a few other people in the chat. It was, you know, it was probably one of the best, like, when it came to like pre merge to end it off on because it was a close rage um, yeah. race. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Um, so, Sherry gets voted off. You gave some parting words. Mm -hmm. And that's when Kristen and Shane were like, you all are now merged. <laughs> um how did it feel making the merge uh obviously great because it means you know i'm going to be a part of the experience for the rest of the game basically regardless of if i was the next one taken out at least i was going to be on the jury uh, at least i believe so there's a little talk of like maybe the first boot still doesn't make the jury but i was like no we're going into the next week like they're gonna put us all in the jury um so so yeah it was cool uh but also uh geez everyone wanted to talk to me immediately and <laughs> i'm 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 an introvert like i i like talking to people like sparingly like like okay i'm talking to this person now let me kind of like get in with this person but suddenly i had like five more people all trying to talk to me at like the same time um 
which was also tough because uh because we took out sherry um i kind of lied to the other tribe about my position in lollipop 2.0 um i told them that uh that it was brandon h and tanya uh basically got in with brandon b and brian to take out reese and uh, right before that tribal they looped me in that was that was kind of like my way of being like I'm I, I was working with them, but I don't really feel comfortable working with them. Like, let me try to talk to you, see how you guys are all doing. Um, and uh, it seemed like they believed it at first. But then I, I mean, obviously, someone from the Misfits, I think, told them because. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that... it, I, yeah, I, I'd say it was around like Saturday night or uh, somewhere around Monday, I feel like the the talks became a little uh less <laughs> i think that's always the tricky thing about lying in general it's like yeah. if people are able to fact check because that's the yeah. thing too it's like no matter what game you're playing whether it's in real life survivor or in a group thing or even in a mini mm -hmm. um or a long form one people are talking they're even mm -hmm. talking behind but that's the thing it's like people are always talking to one another so yeah. you don't know what information is put out there um yeah. it's also I really hard it's... on online stuff because people are talking and you can't see like people going off somewhere like yeah you, you can talk to a lot of people at one time online whereas like in this the game of survivor there's only one of you you can only be having one conversation at a time yes um another thing too and you brought this up it's like messages versus video calls. Because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, from my experience, like we weren't able to message one another. We were mm -hmm. allowed to be friends on Facebook or you could technically follow, I guess nothing prevented you from following someone on Instagram or something. Uh -huh. But, you know, um, it was a little different than how we did it to how you guys did it because you have the chats and whatnot. Um, so would you say that, most of your interactions were through message or through uh, video and uh, like was there like a specific denomination for which one yeah definitely messages was that was what i was doing i wanted my video calls to feel important i wanted like whenever i was talking to someone through a video call that that meant that that was like i was being dead serious i wanted to work with them um so like for a lot of people, I only had maybe one or two solo video calls. Now I did a lot of group calls, like especially um, whenever it was like my group uh, was going to tribal or something, or uh, like I would always be like group call, let's check in, let's make sure that we're all on the same page working together. Um, so I definitely was leading a lot of that, like, like really trying to create like almost a, a system for how our alliances <laughs> were supposed to be working. Um, so, so yeah, I, but, but when it came to like one-on-ones, I really wanted to like use messaging as like the way to kind of like talk about like the you know how's your day go and how's your family um you know uh basic baseline strategy and then leaving calls to uh when i want to like really let someone know like i need to do this all right so um with that being said for um the lollipop 2.0 or for like the newer people was it a lot more messages or would you say like FaceTime with them, especially in the early part? Yeah. Uh, Brandon B uh, definitely loved a lot of, of calls. Um, he definitely did a lot, a lot more. Um, I'd, I mean, I don't know exactly if I had the most calls with him uh, pre-merge, but I definitely feel like I did. Like even Brandon H, like uh, we, we had some solo calls, like we definitely would do it. But uh, Brandon B, uh, I, I was really trying hard to like keep him close to me because I just I, I, I just like immediately knew he was someone who, who's going to go against me if he gets the slightest whiff which ends up happening uh after the match votes but um uh yeah i was i tried I tried really hard to make sure that he was good and even after that like i really was like i spent uh, i mean there there has to be at least over 200 300 messages and like uh, a dozen video calls with him trying to like calm him down <laughs> yeah so um Obviously, Matt was voted off first. Um, and, like, you know, he was a bubblegum. He was finally rest with uh, 
his other sticks of gum, mm -hmm. um, all in one happy thing. And it was a five, five split. So, or no, it was four and then six on the other side. Um, but five, five, when it came to bubblegum 2.0 and lollipop 2.0. Yes. Star um, Starburst so, 2.0. Starburst, my bad. Yeah. Yeah. All good. Was it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Bu Bubblegum was the one to disband, which I thought was like, that's stupid. We're, we have the most people. We should we should have been. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Um, so when it came to that, what was your objective? Um, I will say one thing that I've kind of noticed is that you definitely wanted to have total control of everything. So yeah. What was your objective going into this merge and especially after this first or especially going into the first tribal council? Yeah, uh, I love the fact that Starburst 2.0 was trying to take out Matt's because I just felt like this is the easiest chance to take out a big threat in Sam um, and Matt will forever for the rest of that game. He was going to be someone that we could easily vote out like whenever we just needed a safe vote. We could have thrown out Matt's name and that would have happened. <laughs> and I did not like the fact that that easy vote was happening first thing first, um, because I just felt like that was going to leave a lot of the bigger threats into the game an extra round or so. And it was going to be, uh, you know, a lot tougher to actually control the game, which is what I wanted. Um, also by taking out Matt here and not taking out one of the lollipops, I felt like it gave Brandon B all the control in the game. Um, he, by, by us losing someone who potentially could work with us for at least a vote or two um, and leaving around people who I know Brandon B was working with to a degree, like he wanted to work with Sam coach and Mike. Um, I just felt like that was uh, kind of a blunder by a lot of the players. Uh, uh, whereas people were definitely thinking more group and like, well, a lot of people are just saying this name. So we're just going to agree with it because it's not my name. Um, they weren't actually thinking about the ramifications of that vote. Okay. Um, yeah. So obviously going in, yes, Brandy, Brandon B <laughs> was the biggest threat. Yeah. Um, well insulated on both original um, Lollipop and new Lollipop. Um, and then, you know, it did seem the first two votes were pretty straightforward. Um, there was one thing I want to mention. So this is something I learned from VIP watching the other confessionals. Mm. You did message me. It was like, oh, I'm so in control. Everyone's talking to me. I know a lot. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people were figuring out that you were playing in the middle. Yeah. Pretty, I wouldn't say pretty fast, but I would say definitely around when RC was around RC's elimination. Granted, this is all in a span. It's not like week to week, but yeah. like within that time frame of like between Matt and RC, your name started popping up a little bit more of like, yeah. oh, he's kind of in the middle. Um, at least from uh, OG Lollipop and OG Starburst. So um, were you ever worried that that would get back to your original tribes and they might just try and flip on you? Yeah, definitely. Um, definitely knew my name was starting to come up. Um, it, it really was the math boots. That was my, my biggest blunder uh, of, of the entire game was that day uh, because I tried so hard to save Matt. Um, and uh you know, it just wasn't working. And I tried to then tell Tanya and Brandon H that I want that, you know, that Brandon B was going to be coming out in the best situation of this game. And uh, now looking back, I know that at least one of them told Brandon B about that because the next day he was then messaging me or right after he was messaging me, like there's a lot of like, like he, it, it, he immediately knew why, even though I never told him, like that is because it gives you the best position in the game but he like knew that and so it kind of immediately made us kind of have to go against each other like <laughs> like honestly if, if this was survivor like we would have had the most interesting relationship because we were kind of working with each other but also we both wanted each other out of the game <laughs> it you know it's always tough because it did definitely start to see that um also 
I have to say, this was a side of you I didn't see, and you have the footage and whatnot. You have it. Yeah. I don't know. Is it unlisted right now, or are you going to make them public? Uh, yeah, I'm going to put them all together into one video and make it public. So, looking at one of his confessionals, Joe got pissed. Joe was like, <laughs> hey, if you're not playing my game, uh, I'm going to take you out and stuff. He was... He was, you know, giving off Negan vibes where he's like, you know, we yeah. are playing my game and stuff like that. Um, almost like, I wouldn't say drunk with power, yeah. but uh, Royd raging on power a little bit where he's like, no, you do this. It's my way or the highway. Um, yeah. what, where, where was that coming from? Um, yeah, I just, I, I did not take not being in control of the mat vote very well. Um, the fact that all my allies didn't agree with me was not a great feeling for me. <laughs> I was, I was like, and, and the, the thing that was really bothering me was I had a lot of logic behind like what I was saying and they kind of didn't, they just were like batting away everything without actually using any like real reasons. And I, I like, as someone who loves to like figure out what the best course of action is, like I want to be able to have actual conversations with people. And when, when I'm just getting things batted away without uh, any substance behind what they were then saying, it, it, you know, I'm just like, what are you guys talking about? Like, like you guys are, are just like, just not wanting to re like recognize what's happening right now. Um, so it was definitely, uh, it was definitely tough. I, I feel like the pre-merge, I played a lot like Tony uh, but then I think when I got to the merge, I suddenly became more of like a Boston Rob, <laughs> which interesting. Yeah. I will say that was uh, a later question I had, like, who do you think yeah. you played most like? Um, yeah. And when you're saying that, I do see some Boston Rob, obviously not, uh, obviously not all stars or um, what's the other one um, or Redemption Island. Mm -hmm. And I'm not even saying it was like, oh, we were playing bad games. Because I don't think Boston Rob necessarily played any bad games. It was just more so like, I kind of have noticed that sometimes in orgs, big dick energy gets targeted. And around this yeah. point, you were given a lot of di big dick energy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I will say, so when the... Uh, when it was the day of the the double tribal, the the Sam and and then my eventual boot, um, I heard my name a lot. A lot yeah. of people were talking to me about uh, Brandon B having an extra vote. I found out about that, and I found out um, that he was potentially looking to flip and side with Sam um, and Mike and Erica and Brian use the extra votes and take me out. Um, so I was definitely pretty scared about that. So, you know, I was like, oh, dang, um, I need I, I, like I basically had to start doing some Hail Marys. And uh, I felt like a lot of people up to that point, uh, the, the like my conversations and talks with a lot of people that if I did get to the end, uh, I would definitely win in a lot of jury scenarios. Um so I was really trying to seemingly burn bridges using that day on two people who I felt wouldn't care about like me doing that. And Sam and Brandon B were both people who I thought were very strategically focused. And so by me yeah. being a lot more in your face to those two players, I could then, if, if I survived that day, I could then say, Hey, look at this. Um, Matt is angry at me. He doesn't want to vote for me coach. Uh, you know, I, I didn't even really talk to coach. I had one five minute video call with her. Um, we talked a little bit in chats, but it wasn't like too much. Um, and also I, you know, said it wasn't her right before she gets voted out. <laughs> um, and then Sam and Brandon B, uh, you know, if I had this big chaotic trial, moments with them that i would be able to convince people that i immediately don't have four votes i'm the easiest person to take to the end because no matter how i do from here on out i can't win the game even though i knew i could still win the game if i got there um so yes. so it, it was tough because uh, also the fact that that is the double tribal where i only had uh, like an hour to like actually strategize and make a plan really impacted me. It, it's actually made me now kind of scared to do minis because I'm, a, I'm methodically chaotic. 
like I like to think about how the game is going. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, you know, it, it is one of those things where um, you know, watching your season, it is one of those things where there is time to think. I will say mm -hmm. that minis can be a bit more, I wouldn't say fear based, but it's yeah. more like how fast are you willing to get people behind an idea? And it's like, I will say sometimes it is like, yeah, what's the last name you heard? Um, so it, so let's, let's backtrack a little bit because this was a huge, like little plot point. Um, so at RC's elimination, mm -hmm. Sam played a fake idol. Yeah. Well, he played an idol that was not real. Um, didn't really exist at all. Yeah. And then, I even thought that, oh, shit, did Joe do something? <laughs> Mostly because here's the thing. In Sam's confessional, he said that it was you that did it. So yeah. it was kind of crazy. Like, obviously, VIPs, we are not supposed to metagame. I could have been like, hey, Joe, yeah, your name is coming up in, like, Erica or, or this person's mouth or anything like that while you're mm -hmm. playing um anytime you would tell me something i would just be like just be like uh-huh cool or something like that so that way you didn't know or i didn't want anything i said to like try and like change your thing yeah. so you know like he mentioned that within the thing so i was convinced that you actually did because it was in the confessionals where oh it's outside the game it's just people talking about the game so after seeing that and then seeing that tribal council after the 24 hour challenge, I saw a different side of you that honestly scared me a little bit <laughs> because like, and you even told me you're not very, you're not a really aggressive person. Mm -hmm. um, you are, you know, very nice and all that, even though you have played villain, you do it yeah. more for the lulls and the cheese factor and yeah. being like, yeah, I'm here for the entertainment. It's, it's it was entertainment at the end of the day for me. Yeah. So. so, yeah, tell me about the thing where you were like blatantly open. It was like, Sam, you're going home. Like, <laughs> um, what was? Well, did you watch that back? I'm assuming uh, you did. I did. It, it, I mean, it, to me, it's hard to watch because uh you know yeah. it's it's definitely uh, you know i don't like seeing that side that was a side that i was debating on if i was going to bring that out to be honest uh but uh, yeah. I, I knew within maybe an hour or two after the coach tribal i knew what sam was going to do i knew that he was going to say that i gave him an idol because three minutes before that coach R uh, RC tribal, um, he got into a phone call with me, basically said I was playing a messy game and then hung up. <laughs> that's, that's what happened. <laughs> and so I was like, like, I was, I was confused. I was like, what? <laughs> and, then that and so then I was like, I wish okay. This whole thing was filmed, TBH. Yeah. Uh, if you saw my my face, I was I was flabbergasted. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> so I was I was like I was like still thinking about that conversation. Um, of and, and so Sam wanted to talk to me. Um, uh, that day of the double, but uh, I didn't I didn't uh organize that call. I was like, no, screw it. Like, <laughs> you know, uh, I also knew that if I did make the call and I said literally anything, Sam was going to then go tell Tanya and Brandon H and something bad could happen. Like I essentially yeah. wasn't allowed to have that conversation with Sam. Um, so, so yeah, I, I knew that he was going to do that. And then the second that it happens, I was already like, I, I, I immediately was like prepped and ready if you did say something like that to just shut it down because it's, it's better for me to shut it down there than I think it would be if I didn't say anything. And now suddenly people think that I did something like that. And um, now I'm, I've got a bigger target. Like I just wanted to let everyone know, like, no, that's wrong. This is, you know, don't believe the liar. <laughs> like we, we also, all also it wouldn't make sense too. Yeah, um... exa exactly. And like, I like I would never do that. Um, it wasn't I, I, like a Randy situation where he no. was gonna go home or what they've been doing this season with uh, Jess. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because like yeah. I knew Sam was safe there. Um, and so why would I give a fake idol to someone who I'm then going to have to talk to moving forward in the next two days? <laughs> yeah. Um, it would be interesting. I don't know if uh, Kristen or Shane or any of the game makers will watch this, but it'd be interesting because I don't know if they have done something with Shot in the Dark. Um, I haven't really seen anything other than the minis and 10. Um, but like, you know, in a Shot in the Dark season, if they did that, I believe they did Summit. I think like on context, they did summit in seven. Mm -hmm. It was like either seven or eight, or I know like something. It was one of the seasons with Pirates there, oh. but <laughs> um, you know, so it so yeah, Sam got eliminated, and you guys knew you were going into a challenge, mm -hmm. um, right then and there. So, you know, after that challenge, what was your thought process because yes it was a lot faster for you to go to tribal council than you mm -hmm. have in the past and it's all it was also something where because you didn't believe that reese had a idol or anything you didn't uh -huh. um you were almost certain that sherry didn't to my knowledge they didn't um uh -huh. they never mentioned it in the vips a lot of people did not mention any advantages in their VIPs. Mm -hmm. um, I think maybe because they were worried that someone might leak that information. Yeah. Um, but I mean, like, no one in, or at least the people that I saw in there, they don't seem like people that would have. Um, uh -huh. Maybe it could have, but like, you know. Um, so going into this, at this point, correct me if I'm wrong, Brandon B had a public idol, right? Um, it wasn't public, but we all assumed we, I would all say right. we all like, we're kind of playing under that like idea that he had it. Um, so yeah, it was, it was definitely like we needed to him to be comfortable. So, so, uh, I, I was trying to plan two tribal councils in Brandon B's head of what was going to happen at that day. So that way he would think that. A certain way was going i had told him it's sam first then erica and he agreed because erica was also throwing out brandon b's name so i was like that's the perfect time to have him trying to take out erica and then i coordinate attack against brandon b uh it's at seven where you know if he has an idol he's still gonna think i'm gonna be safe here i can play it at six or five to move forward um so I thought that it was a very good timing uh, for doing that. Um, but, uh, you know, yet again, someone uh, spilled the beans. I'm, I, I believe it was Tanya who told Brandon B about it because I found out later that they were very close. Um, hmm. So uh, if, if Tanya didn't say anything, Brandon B probably plays under the idea that we are taking out Erica um, and doesn't play his idol. He doesn't get a second idol from Tanya. Because Tanya's no. willing to give him the idol. Um, so it would have gone uh pretty well. But yeah, Tanya kind of uh screwed me over. Um, she said that she didn't realize that it was going to cause me to go home, but I mean I don't really <sighs> well, here's one thing I was like confused about because the Sam thing was one thing. Mm -hmm. With uh, you know, coming in very aggressive, being like, it's gonna be yeah. you, it's gonna be you thing. Mm -hmm. going up against brandon b and then also throwing out mike's name as well yeah like i was trust me i was still in the emotions of it because it's like oh no i've never seen this thing of joe but like, looking back you just told two people that they're going home and you're yeah. being very vocal during tribal council about it and you know, it's like the threat of an idol. It was like because idols were out there. There were yeah. there were a lot more idols than um I thought there was gonna be out there. But like yeah. you know, it was definitely like a thing where you were publicly naming these two mm -hmm. and like you said it was Mike. Like how was the what was the logic there? Because that's two numbers where it's yeah. like, well, Joe is like actively saying our names. That could have been two on you. And I mean, it was, was it two yeah. or three on you? I, I had two votes. Yeah. It was just Mike and Brandon like, B. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, explain to me what that. 
so yeah, obviously I said like I was trying to convince him to go for Erica, but um, shortly into us targeting Brandon B, Brandon B kind of stopped talking to me. We had this very weird video call with the Fantastic Misfits of us all trying to agree to vote Erica, like to get Brandon B to think that. Um, but Brandon B was not participating in the conversation he was there but he was messaging he wasn't really responding to our questions um immediately i kind of realized he knows something like he is planning a big move most likely against me um and then uh brandon h ends up telling me yeah that's pretty much what's happening that's he is trying to create a, a move using his idol to take me out um, so now I'm playing kind of under the pretenses of he has an idol. Like I, 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 I kind of have to assume that. Um, so we made the plan to do a split vote onto Brandon B and Mike. Uh, now Tanya ends up not doing that because she got freaked out and pl played emotional when Brandon H said, you know, that maybe he'll vote for her as a, as a joke, which. I I mean, like, I understand, like, you know, uh, don't say something like that, but also, like, it was clearly a joke. I, yeah. I didn't really understand. Like, I, like, that was a huge plot point moving forward. Like, that's, that was like... It started the mistrust. Yeah, and I didn't really quite understand that, but because she did that, even if Brandon B only had one idol and he played for himself, I would have then gone home. Uh, so it definitely screwed me up more. Um, but yeah, I wanted to make Brandon B not know which one to vote for uh in terms of or, or play the idol for for him or mike because if uh i love if if he plays the idol for himself it could have then been a tie vote between me and mike and in my head why the heck is anyone keeping me in the game uh over mike like like <laughs> i just didn't understand and they would all they were all tell me no 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 we'll, we'll keep you and i was like that doesn't <laughs> that makes no sense for me <laughs> um so i i kind of went into that tribal knowing i'm getting votes and that they're going to be playing an idol um so i and and i wanted five minutes before tribal i wanted to make a call with uh tanya and brandon h to vote erica again like i wanted us to to go back over there because it would have then been um uh like we would have had the numbers with just the three of us because how the vote split was all going through um but erica created a uh another video call and kind of forced us all to just sit there um in like the last five minutes like like i couldn't do what i pretty much wanted to do to to end out y'all can time. just leave the call um i mean it, it they they Tanya and Brandon H were already in the call and I just, I couldn't pull them aside. It was two last minutes to. So Erica to, did a buddy system kind of deal. Pretty much. I don't know. I don't think she intentionally did it. I think she just kind of was like, uh, you know, let's just, uh, I have everyone sit here, but it was, it, it definitely, uh, saved her. And I don't know if she even fully knows that. Yeah. Cause that would have been the thing. It's like, I don't know. And I understand the fear of an idol mm -hmm. and whatnot. So, yeah. Uh, but when both idols were played, I, I remember seeing it too. You kind of looked away a little bit because like, well, not a little bit. You just like moved your head. It was like, yep. You kind of knew at that point that you were doomed. Yeah. Um, so one thing I will ask, because this is something I even asked someone else, and it's someone that I didn't really get to play with too much during uh, Fans vs. Favorites 3. This mm -hmm. was someone where I wasn't even in the chat with her, and then she got eliminated in the same tribal council where it was like the where Cliff went. It was Allie. And I even mm -hmm. asked her, because like she in, or she mentioned that there was going to be a mini uh, this last weekend. This is before the hero. When we're recording it, it's before Heroes versus Villains. Mm -hmm. I have no idea. Obviously, I can't see the future, so I don't know how that goes. But I couldn't do it because I have other commi commitments during that weekend. Uh, one of which, uh, Joe and I did a little. Um, I, 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 you know, make a little cameo on his uh, on one of his videos. It's I was a lot of fun. But mm -hmm. to get focus back, um. Did it give you any PTSD when you um, got voted out? Uh, it's weird because I definitely have been thinking about that tribal a lot and like that sequence of events. Um, I want us to say PTSD. It's, I think the fact that I kind of went out the way I did 
um like kind of gave me some solace uh especially because, because it was an idol. yeah it was it was an idol only two people targeted me throughout the entire game there were people who tr- were trying to get the numbers to take me out and they just could never do it like i was actually really hard to play against um sam even said that in his exit like it's it's it was frustrating to play against me because a lot of people liked me, even though they, a lot of people knew I was a threat and a target. Like they couldn't get the numbers for a lot of people because um, uh, around video calls and chats, I was like, you know, I was, I was, ki- I was killing it. It's like everyone loved talking to me. Um, so, so yeah, it was, uh, you know, tough to go out, you know, but also, double uh tr- episode is kind of like what that is and that is like the perfect double episodes of what a survivor episode would be was it was the joe tribals you know <laughs> like i can I, I, I controlled the narrative pretty much both times yeah what can i say guys we we love screen <laughs> yeah <laughs> there have been two people that threw that in my face if you watch the first fans versus favorites trailer Two different people were like, um, did someone say more screen time? And they used that just to like bust my balls. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> um, that's how we are. We're yeah. we're entertainers. So like yeah, you know, we we tend to uh take up some screen time. Yeah. We're we're good, we're willing to share. Yeah. But yeah. like you know, I, I also just realized it was I, I think the season was getting a little boring, to be honest. I thought that the Matt's boot and the coach boot were not very entertaining. And I've I I, I and I've said this in our podcast, like I'm someone who definitely is going to think a bit about the viewer perspective. Like and a lot yeah. I know a lot of players do this too. Um and I just didn't like the idea that uh you know we're g- pr- breezing through this uh post merge and it's just not entertaining <laughs> like like we're and, and and i i know you talked about it too like um that you know when we were like talking to each other like yeah you know it's very predictable like it kind of just was like this is what's going to happen and that's what happened um yeah so to be fair i also was listening into vip yeah so it's something where i had a little bit more insight on what was kind of going on yeah um yeah but I will say one thing about modern day, and this is not just a vanquish thing from what I've seen so far. Mm -hmm. I think it's just like a byproduct of the new era is the dogpile strategy, which is like, oh, everyone dogpiles onto one person. And so there's no split. So it's an effective strategy. But yeah, I would say it's sometimes boring to watch i'm not yeah. saying like yeah i you know like obviously the votes i were in most of them were hey let's put all the votes on this one person mm-hmm. uh yeah it's i mean an effective I, strategy it, but, it's an effective strategy yeah. to some people but the the thing is is like um what you really want to be doing is getting majority with the least amount of people because that is a better way of actually controlling the game and making it further into the game with your group. Um, because when you do a, kind of these big dog piles, um, you know, uh, p- people who maybe could have worked with you are now going out, but you're just like, well, this person uh, doesn't like by these people and they're saying it. So let's just do it. Cause that's what's going on. And it causes, I, I'd say most of the people who do that are not actually thinking about progressing through the game. They're just, they're just happy that it's not them. Yeah. All right. So let me see what other questions I have. I think we might made it through most. Um, I guess, what would you have done differently? Um, at like, if, what would you have done differently knowing what you know uh, now? Yeah. Um, let's see. I mean, it, it, it has to be all about the merge. Um, I think, I think the way I came in probably shouldn't have done that. I probably should have just been like, yeah, I'm working with these people because it's made people immediately not trust me. Once the, once the Matt votes end up going on, um, I probably shouldn't have fought super hard to save Matt. Um, considering I didn't have the want to like make it very deep into the game with him. I like really, I would have probably taken him out where Sam went out. Like that's probably about as far as I would have taken him. Um, 
but I I wanted uh to to make the shots and uh you know other people were afraid to make the shots so so yeah. All right, and another. Well, I have like two more questions. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of which, would you play again? Oh hell yeah! Not even. All right. Thinking. Oh yeah. Um, and uh, is there anything on the horizon that you know of? Um, there is a potential uh season that I might be doing uh for Cinema Survivor. Um, I think they're still looking for a couple more people to fill the spots. Um, but uh, yeah, it's uh the season is going to be Moulin Rouge. So interesting. So, so yeah, uh, I don't know much. I I don't know at all about the format. <laughs> so I'm, okay. I'm definitely curious what they're what they're planning to do. But um, uh, yeah, that's uh that's that that's something that is definitely i'm i'm in the talks right now it's it seems like i'm pretty much in the cast uh but they just got to get a couple more people in nice um and one more question and i already know the answer but i also want them to know would you ever think of hosting an org Oh, well, heck yeah. I mean, I feel, I feel like, uh, now that we've, uh, uh, you know, been a part of it, it feels like a natural thing to potentially do an org for our channel. All right. So yeah, Joe and I have been talking about it a little bit and we mm -hmm. definitely do want to do one, but after our respective org seasons, whether, well, obviously I'm for sure going to be in heroes versus villains apart from casting, being cast in something, mm -hmm. um, and then Joe, you know, like, it seems like he's pretty much going to be in, uh, you know, Cinema Survivor. But, you know, like, confirmation is always nice. But, like, we have been talking about a few ideas for one. Um, but, yeah. And then, obviously, because we're part of the org community, we would probably reach out to uh, people we like. Mm -hmm. um, maybe some people that haven't done orgs just to be like, oh, you know, I really like uh, Person A they're not really a survivor person let's see how they do in it um obviously they would have to want to do it but yeah yeah so um stay and, tuned and, for that and and for any fans you know you know we could try to get on some some of you guys if you want to be a part of uh the day after uh org yeah um yes and uh that being said um i believe that concludes all my questions joe do you have any burning uh things you want to say about your time there or anything um anything you wanted to add or anything you were hoping I would ask that you would want to like share? Yeah. Uh, I think, I think it's clear that I was the the biggest hero of, of the game. Right. I think, I think that's the <laughs> that shadow of the doubt, dude. Like <laughs> when you were yelling that if I don't get my way, that I would vote someone off. I'm like, man, give this guy, make this guy get into the Vatican and just make this dude a saint. <laughs> exactly um See, and i, I mean like the kingpin yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, totally i mean that is that is hero quality right there um, i know right i'm surprised that wasn't like a buzzer thing i'm surprised that they, yeah. they didn't put you on the hero tribe and not uh, instead of erica like what the yeah. heck yeah, I mean, I was ready for it, you know. I could have been a hero, you know. I think the viewer also who you didn't literally watch... play a character called Joe the Angel. Yeah, <laughs> I, I I think that um, if you if people weren't watching the VIP and they missed my elimination like that day, uh, they would think I was a hero. I think up until that point, I I would come across on the challenges and tribals as a hero. Um, yeah. But if you were a VIP and actually knew like what I was doing and like or mod. Mod or um, just overall, if you heard how many lies I curse, I spread, I spread, uh, it, or at least it was it was half truths. You know, I I did a lot of half truths. Um, like I saw it. Like I I'm the reason. Also, like we lose brain and B, Erica and Tanya uh, right after my eliminations because of things I said in the game to to Brandon H. <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah um, yeah like i told everyone that erica uh can't be trusted because she's writing down what everyone says on her notebook um because she was writing some things down and then afterwards she's like i wasn't writing things down she definitely was um so uh I, 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 while you're talking strat 
Yeah, I don't know. She, especially early on, she was doing that. And so I use that as like information, whereas I knew that she was going to go talk to a lot of people and she was going to use that. And if they if they see it for just like a second, my my theory becomes true. <laughs> and so that's why she goes out at five is that Brandon H did not want to get to the end with her. Like we made it very clear. Uh, Brandon B, um, Brandon H also knew, did not want to go very far with him, especially after the idol play to take me out. Um, he skyrocketed in threat level. He was already like a huge threat. He became way too big of a threat at that point. Um, and same with Tanya. I mean, I, I was, I was trying to build her up a lot uh like i i was trying to make it seem like she was a threat especially pre-merge to a lot of people like saying how smart she was how she was able to figure out you know certain things um and uh so so i i, I made her threat level seem pretty high because i was planning to take her out um like my my ideal well here i'll i guess uh, i asked the jury question at the end of um what the ideal final seven onwards would have been um for me uh if you take out all idols and immunities and all this stuff um it would have been brandon b at seven erica at six mike at five tanny at four with me and brandon h and brian at the final three Yes. which and I believe win. I win because I think I could have been able to convince everyone that Brandon H's game was reliant on my game. Interesting. All right. Not that I know anything that would suggest otherwise, but, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think that's always one thing that we kind of, you know, it's like, oh, our ideal final three. I don't think, mm -hmm. I'll be honest, I didn't think that far because my headspace is like, all right, how do I... Yeah make it past the next yeah um i mean there were definitely some people that i thought would have been cool to sit next to uh -huh. um but also like the people that i was working with were also people that you know would have probably been big threats as well yeah. um but yeah all right um any last any last words um you know i uh can't wait to cause more chaos in future orgs <laughs> which yet again i don't uh, even think i was super chaotic by the way i was super loyal i i, I well, told some lies because <laughs> but... pre-merge you didn't pre-merge was pretty straightforward for you granted throwing a challenge is pretty chaotic however yeah, yeah. um i was loyal yeah. as heck to brandon h and tania like like they were i love <laughs> i want to add something uh -huh. so viewers at home I have to call Joe out on this shit. Uh -huh. I love how he says he's loyal as fuck to Brandon H and Tanya. And you know where I'm going with this. I, I don't. But this guy, <laughs> when there was potential for him to be on Heroes versus Villains, and that wasn't the case after he told me that wasn't, he was like, oh, yeah, I'm still going to blindside you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> openly said yeah. that. all right so um yeah um but nah joe whether it's us hosting one or whether kirsten calls us back for another milestone mini or i know their very first fans versus favorites was a vanquish versus fans versus favorites i don't know if she just chooses two slots for us I'm not saying that we're very different how we play uh -huh. i feel um but you know there's always that potential um yeah yeah i i really want to come back for i i want them to do vanquish rifles i i definitely have been trying to say like like in a lot of the chats like wow vanquish rivals would be great because i know i'm definitely someone that i feel like they would reach out just because there's so many options to pair me up with with rifles <laughs> yeah if one's not available they'll be like all right this yeah. one this yeah one. Like, no, like i definitely like, think yeah, Reese, Sherry, Matt, Sam, and Brandon B. Like, that's five people that I could potentially be a rifle with. I feel, I feel like you definitely were an all-star on this one. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So uh, I, I definitely see – well, obviously, you got invited to do another one. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, yeah, pretty much like right afterwards, I had like a few different people trying to get me onto their orgs. Nice. All right, so that's going to wrap up this video. Stay tuned. We'll be doing more of our Survivor um, recaps of each one. And we guess we'll announce this too, but Joe, you take it away because it's your people. 
Wait, what, that what? will be recorded. Oh yeah, we're yeah, gonna yeah, be doing right. some exit <laughs> with. Other I, I was people. wondering. I was like, wait a second. What? Where's this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're doing some some more tell alls with uh, some people from uh from my cast. Um, yes. Which is going to be very interesting because that will be the first time we'll have guests onto the podcast. Um, and uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Uh, you know, talking to them. Um, I'm gonna you know try to be very much neutral and not putting in any of my thoughts too much because I want to hear what they what they thought of the game. Um, I'm yes. hoping that they respond properly too because they're going to be talking to someone from the game who <laughs> you, you never know. know. Yeah. yeah. Um, I will curious. also say I want to reach out to people on my season. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'll be honest, guys. I am terrible when it comes to messaging people. Yeah. Um, it's not like even an anxiety thing. It's just I'm always busy doing other shit. Um, but, you know, we will get some from ours. People from heroes versus villains, potentially. Um, and then, you know, who knows how this is entering a new era. Uh-huh. See what I did there. <laughs> of uh, the day after podcast where, yeah. you know, we are going to have like some more faces pop up, whether it's, you know, whether it's in the org, um, whether it's this or that. Um, yeah, this is going to be a neo age for the day after yeah podcast. yeah it's, it's yeah there's going to be a lot more content that i think we're going to be in the works for so that's always going to be fun for all, uh, everyone to see you know uh it's been pretty much just you know the brand steel or then whenever it's the season we we do that uh but now you know with some of these tell alls coming on and potentially a, a future org going on you know definitely uh there's going to be a little more content coming out uh coming to you so so yeah it's going to be a uh you know Really exciting. All right. Well, thank you guys for watching. Uh, we will see you to Thursday, Friday, whenever we get that video out for yeah. going over episode three and four. And yeah, um, send positive vibes my way. If this send positive vibe my way for heroes versus villains, I'm super excited, super nervous. Um, been looking forward to it. But yeah. Anyway, um, we'll see you guys in the next video. Okay, yeah, adios.